Welcome back to another video presentation. We are looking at CSEC Information Technology Path Paper 2. And the year that we are focusing on is the January 2019 Path Paper. The topic for our videos currently is based on the problem solving and programming section of the syllabus. All right, so let's get right into this question. Question 9a provides us with a diagram and in this diagram it says that we are to come or table rather it says we are to complete the table by stating whether each of the statements represents an input a process or an output all right so the first one says read the statement says to read the discount and read in our problem solving and programming aspect refers to an input all right subtract discount means that some form of processing calculation is taking place so this would have been a process all right prompt for a discount means that a message will be displayed on screen and message being displayed on screen meant that this would have been an output. All right, enter a discount. Again, enter similar to input. And finally, display the amount. So display is also being presenting some information on screen and this would have been an output. All right, total of five marks for that aspect of question nine. We're moving on to 9AII. And this question says that we ought to arrange the statements in this diagram here in logical order using the numbers 1 to 4. So which one would be the first step, second, etc. Alright, so in this case, the first step would have been to prompt the user for a discount. Alright, once the user has have been prompt for that, they would then enter the discount. Alright, so they would enter the discount. After they enter that discount, the computer would then read that discount. All right, so read the discount, now that is three. After the computer reads, it is then able to subtract the discount or make a calculation, right? So that's four. And finally, to display the amounts that should be given on screen. All right, so that's the last one. Total of five marks for that question. All right, moving on to question 9b. We are presented again with a table and the information says that during the months of April and May, students should attend school only if there is an exam for one of their subjects, right? So we ought to complete the following truth table to determine whether the student should attend school, Y for yes and N for no. So the criteria that we received is that the student attends school only if there is an exam for one of their subject, all right? So for this example, the first one, the student is on holiday, but that is not where we're testing for the criteria. As long as there is a Y for the subject, then that means that the output should be Y because the student attended school based on the exam. So for this, we're looking again based on the exam. Even though they are on holiday, yes, they did not have any exam. So that's a no and the output would have been a no. Again, exam, they had a Y for the exam. So in this case, the output is also a Y. Last one, there was no exam. So output, no. And that would have arrived at a total of four marks. Question part C says to state a suitable data type for the variable school holiday as described. The fact that we have a Y and an N that would also match back to true or false. So the data type, or true or false would have been a boolean 
All right, moving on to question number 10. All right, question number 10. Answer each of the following questions based on the three sentences on the diagram below. So we have three sentences here and the diagram. So A says that we must write each of the sentences within the appropriate symbol on the diagram above to show the flow of information. So in order to fill this out, we should know the type of loop that will be presented on this based on the fact that we have um, a connecting arrow leaving from the process back to the decision so that would in indicate that a looping is taking place and then we identify what type of loop it is all right so the two main type of loop that we would look at for this question would have been the while loop and the repeat until loop right so again just to narrow it down this would have been used in a while loop because the condition started off and then from that we were able to execute the code or to perform the actions all right so let's fill in these three sentences within the appropriate symbol so the decision normally entails a question or that which is making a comparison. So in this, the question would have been the second one, which says, are you late for the bus? All right. So are you late for the bus? All right. So they want to determine if you're late for the bus, which of them would enter into the loop. So, um, are you late for the bus? The yes in this case for the while loop would be the one entering in the loop. And if you're late for the bus, that means that you would be walking to school. So walk to school. And then additionally, the other would have been to wait for the bus. So that's A. B says we must write in the yes or the no. So normally we must have the yes or no coming out of the decision to determine which of them would have been the true, which of would have been the false. So in this case, are you late for the bus? Walking to school would have been true. So this would have been the yes. And then waiting for the bus means that would have been the no for that. All right. So walking to school would have been the part entering into the loop. C, I says to state the type of diagram above, and that would be a flowchart. All right, I, I, name the type of loop, which I would have discussed earlier. So this is a while loop. All right, rewrite the three sentences as a conditional statement. So conditional would mean the decision, decision leading back to an if statement. So we start off, we want to find out if the person was late for the bus, what would happen first, what would happen next, all right? So we turn in sentences above into the if statement. So if late, so let's say if the late is equal to yes, then what should happen first? If it is yes, the person would walk to school. So then probably print out the message, walk to school, right? Or else, what's the next option if they were not late for school? Next option would have been to wait for the bus, all right? So else print, wait for the bus. And that would have given us our total of three marks. Moving on to question 11. It says that a programmer is asked to write a program for a health store that is offering a 10% discount on local juices. First, we are asked to write the Pascal code for each of the following. The first one says to declare one constant which can be used in the program. Constant is referring to that um, data which has a fixed value, right? So in this case, there is a discount of a fixed value of 10%. So that would have been an example of constant. So in Pascal, if we would have double checked the notes, we start off with the const, right? Keyword, followed by what's the constant that, it, that we want to 
um, declare. So in this case, the constant would be this count, and that is assigned the value of 10%, or we could have written it as this count equals 0 0.10 followed by a semicolon to end that line. All right, next one. Declare two meaningful variables and their data type, which can store the data to be input to the program. All right, so two variables, maybe one we could ask the person for their name. Another could be asking for the price of the juice that they wish to purchase. All right, so again, similar to const, we have our var, short for variable. What are the variables that we want to declare and assign their data type? So we say f name, representing the person's full name. So f name colon followed by the data type. Names are normally referred to as string for the data type, and we end the line with a semicolon. Second one, we say the price of the local juice. So that again, the variable name followed by a colon and then assigning the data type which would be either an integer or a real and in my case i'm gonna use real as a data type and we end the line with a semicolon third one says to write a statement to calculate the discount if a person purchases the local juice so what is it that they want to find they want to find the discount all right so that's discount and calculation, meaning that we have a colon along with our equal sign, and then we want to find the discount for the local juice. So we're using price multiplied by the discount amount, which was 0 0.10, and we end the line with a semicolon. All right, that would provide us with a total of three marks. All right, so this would have wrapped up our 2019 January paper two, focusing on problem solving and programming. I do hope that you would have learned something new. And for those who are just recapping, I do hope that this would have provided some more clarification to what you would have already um, garnered. All right, thank you again so much for watching. I ask that you like, share, subscribe, and just share the link with someone who you know would benefit from this video, moving on to exam or just getting some clarifications for these questions. All right, again, thank you very much for watching and do stay tuned for other videos to come on past papers. All right, goodbye.